Hey up troops, a little to near again with another video and this time we're looking at Fuse. Now Fuse- Now Fuse for me is a really strong operator when you're attacking downstairs on certain maps. The occasional map upstairs, but mainly when you're attacking basements and ground floors. The key thing that's going to make you a really, really good Fuse player is understanding the distribution of the pellets or pucks and the direction they go in. That's the key, key thing that you need to take. As soon as you can work out what areas of the map and the, the floor underneath you or the floor opposite you that you're trying to clear, you know which direction the pucks are going to go in. You can place the charge in a certain way. It, honestly, it's so, so, so strong. I genuinely think Fuse would be picked a lot more if he wasn't a one speed. He's got two Unreal guns, which we'll get to in the loadout. But two Unreal guns, utility gets four cluster charges. And when you use them and you know what you're doing with them, they're very, very strong. Just one thing to quickly say about Fuse is try not to get too bogged down with getting kills with the pallets or pucks. Now, don't get me wrong. If you get a kill, excellent. However, that's not really, in my opinion, his main role. His main role was to clear utility on the site underneath and to flush players and manipulate the site so people can no longer anchor in certain spots and they have to get pushed into line of sight to your teammates. Let's just take this very window on Cafe Prep and you could have a book holding the window from above. You could fuse someone further back in kitchen cooking and force someone to go towards the prep window. Once they're at the prep window, the book above just melts them. But you're forcing people into other people into your teammates' line of sight. Uh, what I do want to say as well, whilst I'm here, this is a little bit soppy, so I'm sorry about that. I've only been posting these videos for like six weeks. We're already over halfway to becoming a YouTube partner. So thank you, thank you very much for watching the videos. The more you watch, the more it helps me, the more I can make the guides. Try and watch as much of the video as you can. But look, we're over halfway to YouTube partner, so seriously, thank you very much. The flavor is going to be the same again. We'll start with the basics. We'll go through how his gadget works, and then I'll use my favorite places to use the cluster charge and some examples of sites and, and the best way of getting the most out of use. Probably enough of me waffling on again. Let's get stuck into it. So we'll start as we always do with Fuse with his loadout. And wow, there's a lot to talk about here because he's got literally everything. Um, I'm not a big seed shield fan. I, I just don't mix well with shields. If you can use shields and you're good with it, then obviously go for it. Um, I always think you bring more to your team when you've got a gun in your hand personally, especially as a, as a fuse. Um, so it's just moving off shields, if you can use it, crack on. For me, it's between the LMG or the 6P41 and the AK. Um, it's a real toss up and I can make a case for using both. What I will say about the LMG is that it's been in the game like since forever. And no one really used to talk about how good it was and no one mentioned that it needed nerfing. Since Finca has become part of the meta now with her changes, and she's got the option to use the 6P41. Everyone's saying how good it is and that it needs nerfing and stuff. It is insane. And, the, you know, it's had like a sort of select, like sort of fan base of people who think it's a really good gun for ages. Um, it's been slept on, I think, by a lot of the community. So I can see a case for using both of these guns. Personally, I've started running the LMG a lot. I used to run the AK religiously. I now mix between the two. But yeah, 46 damage, 680 fire rate. Obviously, with the AK, the fire rate's way higher, damage slightly less. What I will say about the LMG, just to make a quick comparison, everybody thinks Sledge's gun is amazing. So this does 46 damage with a 680 fire rate. Let's go and have a look at Sledge's L85. 47 damage, 670 fire rate. So it does one more damage, but the fire rate is slightly less. Everyone thinks this is like a great gun, whereas for some reason, some people with the LMG, they just think it's not as good. You've got 100 rounds in a mag, but anyway... Um, Pistol-wise, PMM does far more damage than um, than the other with 61 damage there. Obviously, only 44 damage for the GSH. I always run the PMM. I don't think if you're, if you're sort of resorting to using your pistol, it's not very often you have to fire more than eight shots. The benefit with the GSH, obviously, is that you've got you've 18 uh, rounds in there to use. Now, personally, I always go hard breach charge as well. Breaching charges, granted, do make a bigger hole in the floor or in the wall, whatever you want to do. However, hard breach charges are just more useful, the more versatile. Um, and if you need, still, you need to make vertical in a certain area, you can still use hard breach charges anyway. So I always run hard breach. For me recently, I always used to run the AK, but in recent months with the hype around Finker and the LMG, I've started running this more. So personally, I go LMG, um, PMM, hard breach charge. But with Fuse, there is so much choice. You can't really go wrong, really, unless you use the shield. 
So starting with the absolute basics of Fuse's utility, he has a cluster charge that he can put onto a soft wall, a reinforced wall, onto a soft wall, reinforced hatch, soft hatch, whatever it might be. Um, what that does, I think, is going to be best showing you from the roof if I can rappel down and show you a top-down view. So you walk up to the wall, you get your cluster charge out like this, you walk up to the whatever you're putting it on, in this case it's going to be a wall. We place it down, and just make a note of the light, because that will be important when we're putting it on the floor. So it goes on the on the, on the the wall like that, and when you next press your gadget button, it's going to disperse the cluster charge through the other side of the wall. So what I'm going to do is just nip up to the roof quickly, and I think if we rappel down the other side, you're going to be able to get a better top-down view um, than you can do if I just watch it. So if we rappel here... So we've placed the cluster charge on this soft wall, and what you're going to see is the cluster charge sort of has a tube that penetrates through the wall and will disperse five pellets right to left. So we can watch it from above here, but as you'll, you'll see, the first one will go out in this direction, the next one will go in this direction, and it sends them out in a fan-like. I'm going to put a little bit of a sort of drawing on the screen at the minute so you can see the pattern that it sends things out when you put it on a wall, but you'll be able to see it when I set this, this charge off now. So as you saw, the first pallet went far right, then sort of middle right, then down the middle, then middle left, and then far left. So it fans out really, really well. So I'll show you just one more time. I've put another charge on the wall just to the left of the one we originally put down. Look out for the tube coming out the wall, and then watch them um, disperse in that pattern five again. There you go. Now, when you put it on a wall, you can't really go wrong with the pattern that the pellets are going to go in. It's going to go to the right first, and, and it's going to go straight out. The reason I mentioned the light at the start of the, the demonstration about its utility is because the light at the top of the charge is the direction that it's going to go in first. So if we see the light there, we know the, 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 the um, cluster charge is facing sort of this direction, if you know what I mean. So the first one is going to go in this direction, and then it's going to go like this since then. It's never going to go backwards, and it's never going to go like this. It's always going to go to the right of where that light is. So if we turn this around and we put it this direction instead, you know we're now facing south on the compass, and it's going to go this way first, and then this way, whilst it's underneath. I've opened this hatch, so I'll drop down and we'll, we'll have a look. So we know it was facing... Um, we know it was facing south, so it's facing this direction. You'll see it pop through the ceiling here, and it's going to go right and then down like this. That one just got caught on the uh, one got caught on the on the vents there. But as you saw, it came down and it went this way and then like that. So just make a note, or well, not make a note, but you know, make a mental note of which direction the light is facing is the way that you you can sort of anticipate which direction the pellets are going to go in. I'm just going to mention the, the positioning of the cluster charge just one more time with an example of how you might want to clear out a certain part of the site. So, let's just say we're attacking the workshop site on border. We want to clear out, as you can already see, I've had a sort of little test here. We want to clear out the back of workshop, right, which goes from here round to sort of here area. Now, I don't know why I'm reloading an LMG after I fired a couple of rounds. I'm really bad for that. So, the, the key thing is here, as I said, once we put the cluster charge down... We know it's the light's now facing this direction, so the pallets are going to go this direction first to the right. It's always right to left, so here, 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 and here is where they're going to go. If you want to clear out the back of workshop, there's no point being above here and placing the cluster charge like this. Because you know the first one's going to go here, and then sort of here-ish, then here, and then here, and here. It's going to hit the back of the wall there. So, this is just an example of a, a type of an area of a map where you could clear out quite um, comfortably and quite confident knowing there's going to be nobody back there because that strip at the back of the site will be completely clear. So, let's just put that on the floor, light facing forward. So, when we drop down, we know this strip here is going to be completely clear of utility and completely clear of players because nobody can stand there and live. So it's good. the first one's going to come out and go this direction. So it, the pallets are going to go, as you can see what the, the tester did before. So one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. So let's see it in action. That line is now completely clear of all utility and players. Obviously someone can move back there afterwards. But that's just a way you could clear it out. If someone's now playing here, in, the, in this line, you would now then go upstairs and in this area here, We'll place the cluster charge facing this stack on, put it on the floor, even though I just tried. Placing, like, facing this direction, and then you're going to go one, two, three, four, five. I know I've dwelled on the positioning of the of the cluster charges for a while now, but it really is a key, key way of getting better with fuse and learning how to clear out parts of the site. 
So with the most recent changes to Fuse, he can now also use his cluster charges on reinforced walls like this, and it works exactly the same except for one detail. So you put the charge on, it's still exactly the same, it'll go right to left, and it still goes on the wall, you still see the light. The only difference is there's like a, a sort of ignition phase whilst the, the, fu the fuse charge sort of charges up. It's there really to give the defenders a bit of warning that there's a fuse charge coming through. Um, but you'll see the, the charge sort of thing start burning and then you'll see it come through as a, a fuse charge normally does. So there you see the charge burning and then it comes through. Let me get out of the way. And that's exactly the same in terms of the way the, the direction the pallets go. One thing of note if you're a defender, if somebody is fuse charging the reinforced wall, you do get a small period of time to try and destroy the fuse charge before it goes off when it's in its sort of spark phase. Um, if you see it sparking, give it a big old spray down to destroy it like this. It's not the easiest thing to destroy. And now and then, uh, one of the pallets will get out. I'm not, if I'm being brutally honest with you folks, I'm not entirely sure what the best angle to destroy it is. And my advice is if you can, just run away. But it's not something you can just turn around and go, oh, there's a fuse charge, I'll just want tap that. And you really need to give it a good spray down. Either that or I'm just a terrible shot. But it can be destroyed on a reinforced wall and a reinforced hatch, so just bear that in mind. So just to demonstrate, much like, hello. Excuse me. Much like reinforced walls, you can also fuse charge through reinforced hatches. It works exactly the same way again. I've got another little visitor, I think. Hello? Um, so yeah, much like with the, the way that... It do, exactly the same way it does on a floor, really. So the light's facing this way. It's going to go out to the right first. So if we nip downstairs, we'll see it in action. So just remember, the light is facing to the south. So I think there's a shield that I saw down there. I wonder if we can get rid of the shield. This is just a really good demonstration of what, how good of a widespread sort of cup, excuse me, the coverage that the um, the cluster charges give you. So we're on the hatch here, much like that. There's a shield there. I wonder if it'll get the shield. Might do. Nah, it'll probably be too far away. It'll land about here. Um, so the um, charge will come out right first again. It's much like the, the reinforced walls. There'll be a sort of ignition period as such as it comes through the hatch before the pallets drop. So let's have a look. I'm just going to hit that cabinet, I imagine. So how's it pops? And again, it's exactly the same as reinforced walls. Um, you can shoot it as it's coming through the hatch if you're quick enough. Um, but yeah, it works exactly the same way as reinforced walls. So we're on to border, and as we've already discussed, when you're attacking vents, fuse is really useful to clear two main highways of where the defenders stand. The back of workshop here, if you put one charge facing east, it's going to go right first, obviously, and then it's going to clear out this whole strip of where defenders stand along here underneath. One, two, three, four, five. That's that whole strip completely cleared out. The other strip that people stand on is this here. So if you can see where I put the other charge, it's going to land one, two, three, four, and five. So if we go upstairs, that hole was actually in line with the middle of the lockers. You can't really get it wrong um, where this hole was here. So we put one in line with this, facing west. If we nip downstairs, you'll see that'll clear out that entire line as well. That'll also clear any shield that's on this door. You'll quite often see someone playing a shield on this door to cover the main door. But yeah, you can see that one, two, three, four, and five. Really good, just two fuse charges come clears out a lot of the utility from workshop and a lot of common areas where defenders are likely to uh, to be anchoring from. We're on to attacking consulate downstairs now, and this one is unreal. It's just really, really useful. We've all been attacking downstairs on consulate where there's somebody either behind the white van or up on the pillar here or behind the boxes or in the rotator, whatever it might be. You're going to be able to clear out this whole sort of line here. If you see where I am upstairs, you want to be facing east or west. It's up to you which direction you want the pallet to go in first. And you want to be roughly halfway between the piano double door and where the sort of entrance to the bathroom door starts. Not here, but here. And you want to be, remember the breach is underneath us here. So you want to be facing this way or this way. I like facing east personally. You want to get your fuse charge down like this. And if you look on the drone, let me move back a bit so we don't lose the drone. And we'll jump on the cam quickly. Big line all the way along. You can't see the floor there where it's done the damage, but it's all the way from the rotate to the white van. Um, you can also then come a bit further across if you want to, uh, to this direction here, which will be closer to the breach. And you can clear out the area behind white van there if you want to. You can obviously go um, left to right underneath there on that one ping um, here. Pop that down there. 
and that'll go left to right behind the white van. Sorry, right to left behind the white van. Let me move the uh, drone again. We can watch again. Just managed to get the last one, which destroyed the drone. But that this down here is all down the side of white van. So that'll clear down the side of white van. This will clear behind white van and yellow pillar. And you can then make a, a decision on where else you want to clear. Just remember, you can't get massively um, vertical on the area here. Um, because it's all covered by the, the bathroom floor. Um, the bathroom floor gets hard around the hatch here. So yeah, just bear that in mind. But if you put the fuse charge there, it's going to clear all the way along here. And then down the side of white van as well. So we're on chalet when attacking big garage now, and again, fuse is really useful. You can clear out connector with one fuse cluster charge. You want to be facing west, and you want to be putting it basically adjacent the corner of the hatch here. So just where the number one ping is. Let me shift the uh, the drone there. So you want to be facing west. Pop it down right next to this piece of uh, the settee here. And if we jump on the drone, in fact, I'll go downstairs, because you can't get on the drone fast enough once you set it off. But we'll stay out of connector for obvious reasons, but you'll see what happens. We really got it right on the corner here. It was going to clear out connector. Anyone in there is done though. The hope, the hope really is here that when it's going off, that the only way they can go is out and get peaked by the breach. Obviously, they might be able to go through to wine, but you're still going to have an angle on them slightly when they come through. The other thing you want to be doing is forcing people out of this rotate, which is nine times out of ten here. And you want to be doing that by placing the cluster charge on one. So give yourself a ping, go upstairs and have a look at where that is. So that's right here. So what you want to be doing is putting that in line with the breach there. So this is going south, the light facing south. If we nip back downstairs, you'll see what I mean. And much like the border workshop cluster charge, it's going to do a similar thing. It's in this area here. I think you, no, you can't see it, but it's going to go right to left along here. Anyone playing back wines in for a hard time there as well. And this is a really classic anchor point while someone's holding wine here. So being able to do that will, will turf somebody out of there. The idea, hopefully, is that when that cluster charge goes off, they've either got to go this way, which means they're going to be held from the door, or they've got to go this way through the rotate, which means there's someone on the breach all being well. That's the plan. Attacking clubhouse basement. So before I start putting the clues, uh, clues, I don't know what a clues charge is, a fuse charge, I'm going to go downstairs and show you the areas that you know, Let me put a rotate here, just make it a bit easier. I'm going to show you the areas that you want to be clearing out, really. Shall we a second? Talk amongst yourselves. Right, so whilst we're in here, you want to be putting one at the top end of the kitchen facing west. It's going to clear out the back of here. And then also, you want to be putting one near the hatch or here or so. And that's going to clear out, um, putting that facing south. And that's going to clear out down this side. And then also, you can get one in the corridor to clear out the um, the whole corridor itself. You'll get a shield playing on a church door sometimes. So I go with that as well. So going on that first, put your one ping down. So you can learn where that is. And you want to go right to left. So you want to be facing south. Like this. Right in the middle of the corridor, essentially. If you look at where that is outside the kitchen door. If you look at the damage that does along the corridor here. Ah! So I don't know that noise was. All the way down the corridor there. And the next two will clear out the back of Arsenal. And the side of Arsenal. So you want to be here. You want to be facing west. And this will clear out the back. I'm going to go back down and show you. Would have been easier to do this with a drone, maybe, but... Live and learn. Yeah, I can't go through the rotate there, because I'll die. But this will it'll clear out all the way back of sight there. Spot on. And then the other one is exactly the same as that, but I'll show you where you want to be putting that in kitchen. I won't come down and watch it, but... So you want to be putting that south as well. So this was back arsenal here. And to clear the side of it, you want to be about here. Facing south, and then that's going to go bang all this this line here. I was going to do five. Bang, 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 bang. Anyway, that'll do that for you. Spot on. If you then can clear clubhouse, the, oh, sorry, basement, the only thing you've got to worry about then is like boxes, AKs, dirt, that you know back arsenal is going to be clear. This time we're on cafe and we're attacking kitchen, and again, fuse is really, really strong for this, uh, this map as well. Uh, for this site as well, sorry. So, we can clear out freezer easy enough. We just pop a fuse charge on one. It doesn't really matter which way you face it. It's up to you which way you want to go. I normally go um, facing west, so there's a chance it'll pop out the door if need be. You can also face it south, so there's a chance it'll pop out the window if need be as well. Because this here is a common anchor point here. So you can do that if you wish. Um, we'll just have a quick look at the way that goes. That's just going to clear out all the freezer there. And you can see that anyone's in freezer, the dunzo. 
So we're going to talk about clearing out kitchen cooking now. You can already see I've used the demonstration hole here. So what you've got here, I put the drone, by the way, this drone is really easy to do. You come through the drone hole here, come up on the potato sacks, up onto this tray here, and then tuck into the top shelf here. I get this drone here so many times without being spotted. Uh, not in the prep phase, obviously, but as the action phase starts, you can get this up here and it gives you such good information. These are the three lanes that you want to worry about here. You've got the one here, you've got the one in the middle, and you've got the one adjacent to the wall there. I always start with the middle one first. That's on one ping. It's right on this angle here. And you, the way you want to be going is east to west. So you want to make sure that the pellets are coming lengthways down each sort of corridor rather than across ways across the kitchen. So you want to go this way. So for that, you need to be facing west. Pop that down there. I'll try and jump on the drone as quick as I can. So you can see all the way down that line there has been cleared out. You can do the same here on the outer lane, which is here. And all you've got to do is just be on slightly on the other side of the train. So that, as you can see there, the one ping's there. That's there. If you go here and you want to be going west to east um, again. Again, I'll try and jump on my drone as quickly as I can. Another line right the way down there. And again, you can do the wall if you want to. The breach is on one. Um, and again, you've just got to go east to west again. So I haven't got any more charges for this uh, example. But again, put your charge there. And you'll see that's the wall there. And you can go all the way along there. We're on Oregon upstairs, and I know what you're thinking. Fuse upstairs, Oregon is not a combination you want to be mixing. But however, he is. He, there is one thing you can do with him up here which works really well. I actually saw this on a TikToker account called Mad Science, and if you don't know who he is, check him out on TikTok, mad.science. I'm going to claim this as my own. Essentially, what you can do is, it's a bit risky to be honest, because once you put your fuse charge on this wall, obviously you can be peaked from... Um, the hobo wall from maybe even white stairs depending on the angle but if you can get your fuse charge on this wall here which will no doubt be reinforced what you can then do is whilst we don't set it off straight away leave that to be reinforced and then either go out of satellite window or whatever it is you go out of and go over to kids window however you get there is up to you don't set that off whilst you're on there though and you come over to kids window assuming kids window is closed you put as you're getting ready outside the window here you set the charge off on the reinforced wall bear in mind there's a delay for it going off whilst you do that you put one on the window here and you set that off immediately what that then does is the charge that was on this wall here will go off one two three four five here and the one that was on kids window remember there's going to be a rotate here so let's just put that in for easy math um whilst you've set the one off on kids window because there was a delay for the one going off over on that wall generally the person in attic whilst they hear this fuse charge going off the first place they're going to run is kids window through the attic hopefully you can get them peek from the breach while they're doing it and as they get here this one goes off as well so you're sort of cutting off this whole area and this whole area with two fuse charges mainly because this one is going to have a delay going off because this wall is reinforced the other thing to do on this site as well is to fuse charge this window at the start of the round because you're going to get rid of any utility that's that's in this position here on the closet wall. No matter what it is, Cade, Mute, Bandit, whatever it'll be, it's going to get rid of that core or the, the batteries or whatever it is on this wall as well. It's a bit risky fusing um, barricaded windows, obviously, because you can be wall banged through it, but if you're quick enough and um, there's enough stuff going on on the other parts of the map, you, you get away with it usually. So there we have it. That's Fuse. I'm sorry about the intro again. I'm going to get better at that, I swear. For me, Fuse, even though he's situational, but when you're attacking a downstairs site and the floors are soft, he's absolutely unreal. When you've got to grips with, I'm going to mention it again, the right to left puck movement and you look at your compass and you know which way you're putting the cluster charge, you can literally flush areas of a site just so, so well. And as well, don't forget, comment what operator you want to see next. Fuse was done because of the request that we had. So if you want to see a particular operator, get it in the comments and I'll do that next. If you don't sub to the channel, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It makes my day and it really helps me out. So cheers. Thank you. Don't forget, I also stream on Twitch four days a week, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday at 8 p.m. UK time. Come and say hello over there as well. Say you came from YouTube and I'll, I don't know, I'll do a dance or something. I don't know. That wraps us up here this time. So look, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Cheers.